Welcome. Uh, surprise, I am not Josh Cochran. Although I look better than Josh, uh, unfortunately Josh hasn't been able to make it. Um, I'm jumping in, in his, on his behalf and we're going to take you through this uh, amazing souffle uh, masterclass. So we have two amazing recipes today. We have a strawberry and rhubarb souffle and then we have a gluten-free passion fruit souffle. Um, and souffles are People say they're tricky, but they're quite easy to do once you know how. And it's all about pumping up air into egg whites and egg yolks and um, making little air bubbles and really sort of putting that all together and making a beautiful souffle and it rises up nicely and it should hold for quite some time. Um, don't believe that uh, old age adage where if you open the oven, uh, they're going to collapse. They won't. Um, I'll take you through some great, great recipes today and run through them and I hope you'll enjoy them. If you have your recipes in front of you, which uh, I believe um, Nick sent out earlier, um, feel free to, to run along and try and keep up. Uh, otherwise, they're there um, for you to follow and you can make it again later on or um, just take the tips that I, I bring, bring forward to you um, and make them as we go along. Um, I've been making a lot of souffles over my 28 year career um, and I have been doing um, thousands and thousands of souffles over my career actually and we when I was in Adelaide as an apprentice we had a souffle um, menu we had 10 different souffles on the menu uh, believe it or not and we all made those souffles to order and we used to make 70 to 80 souffles in an evening. Um, that was quite an experience. Um, and so I've got a lot of experience in all different types, savory, sweet, um, all different flavors. Um, so today we're gonna run through that. Um, here at the club, what we've been doing is we've been doing, um, in the kitchens, we've been doing some um, meals that we've been sending out to all our charities. Um, so we've been doing about um, 3000 meals a week. Um, so, They've been going really well and we're really lucky and really proud that we've been um, been able to continue doing that and helping out the Victorian con community. We're up to 40,000 meals since we started. So um, that's why I'm here at the club today. And um, so we're going to get started. So we've got some beautiful rhubarb here. Now this rhubarb is um, my grandfather used to grow this in the garden all the time and um, I was used to love rhubarb growing up as a kid. My nana used to make apple and rhubarb crumble and apple and rhubarb pie. Um, the green part is actually, um, it's poisonous, so don't eat that. So we cut that bit off and we don't use that at all. Um, and then we cut the ends off and then you basically peel the rhubarb like so. So just in, into the end and just peel it off like that. Now, I always use the skins. Um, so what I normally do with the skins, I cook them off in a little bit of sugar and a little bit of white wine. Um, and then I um, strain them out and I normally put them in um, to the rhubarb as well because there's a lot of color and flavor in the skins. So we've got about 110, 120 grams worth of rhubarb that we're gonna cut up. and then peel them. Now rhubarb is quite astringent, it's quite, it's quite sour. Um, so you normally you use quite a reasonable amount of sugar just to balance out that sourness. And we'll do that today. So what we're doing here, we're making the base of the souffle. So basically it's just a puree. We're gonna, cut these up in small pieces and soften them up with some a little bit of water. We're going to cut up the strawberries and put them in the pan as well with a little bit of water as well. So we're just going to chop them quite finely. Um, if you have any of the of the skin on it might make it the the um, the puree is quite stringy. So you want to take most of that skin off. So 
So we're cutting it quite small because we want to cook it quite quickly. Just going to throw that in the pan. So there are a number of different methods to you to make a, a souffle base. This one here is with corn flour. Um, so I'm going to make that, thicken it up and make it uh, strong with the corn flour. I'm going to turn that on. So you need a strong base, something that's going to hold uh, those egg whites together um, when you mix your egg whites in with your souffle base. And we've got a, some strawberries, about 40 grams worth of strawberries. We're going to throw them in there as well. Just chop them up nicely. Now this time of year, unfortunately, we don't get um, strawberries from Victoria. We have to get them from Queensland. There's two two seasons of strawberries. There's one season which is over summer in Victoria and during the winter you get the the other half is um, you always get your strawberries from Queensland and sometimes WA. So just take them through just a little bit of water. So we just cook that off until it's nice and soft. It'll take a couple of minutes. Whilst we're doing that, what we want to do is uh, line our souffle mould. So I have these moulds here. Uh, beautiful ceramic ones. If you don't have a souffle mould, you can easily get a, a cup, um, a teacup or a coffee cup, a coffee mug even, you can use that. Um, as long as it's um, oven safe, um, it should be fine. So what we need to do in a secret to lining a souffle uh, mould or a, a mould is you grab a bit of softened butter, not melted, but softened. So it should be soft and then you brush upwards from the bottom up. See how I'm brushing that upwards? What this does is it actually makes the souffle rise up. So if, you, if you're going um, straight up, when you put your sugar in, what's going to happen is it makes a little bit of a barrier. Once the sugar, um, the butter melts, the sugar helps the souffle go right up. So it gives it no resistance on the edge of the souffle there. So it will rise straight up. So we do that there. And at this point as well, you want to have your oven on at about 180 degrees, so 175, 180 degrees. Now you want a, that, that's a hot oven, so you want that quite hot because what that will do is once we whisk up all our egg whites, what we're trying to do is make little tiny bubbles. That's what makes the, um, when you're whisking egg whites, that's what makes them, you're actually, you're actually incorporating air into the egg whites and that creates little tiny bubbles. You can't see them with, the, with your naked eye, but when you're actually looking, um, you, can, you, cannot, you can see it's growing in volume when you're whisking. Um, so once you add air into that mixture, you're making all these little bubbles. And with a hot, uh, very hot oven, what that does is it makes those bubbles expand. And when those bubbles are expanding, that's what makes the souffle rise up. And the, so we don't brush the base. Um, I leave the base um, not brushed and no sugar because that will hold the souffle on the bottom. Sometimes, sometimes with souffles, 
what happens is um, if you don't brush the bottom, they can lift right up off the bottom. So I don't brush the bottom, I'm just brushing the sides. So we just had a question about strawberries. Are they sweeter from one particular area? I would say no, but there, there are many varieties of strawberries and there are certain strawberries that are um, better flavor and sweeter than others. Um, but really, if you get any, go to any strawberry field and you're picking your own strawberries, you're picking them right at the last minute because it has all that sunshine uh, that's really ripening the strawberries and making them really, really sweet. The strawberries you get in the supermarket are not ripened far enough. So they, they, they leave them so they get good shape and they don't spoil easily, but they don't have the same flavor as if you went and picked them yourself. So if you have the opportunity, I would go and pick my own strawberries. So once that's, um, that mixture has softened, then what we're doing, we're just gonna puree that up. Make it nice and smooth. I'm going to leave that to the side and then uh, I'm going to go back to the souffle molds. We're just going to add our sugar, raw sugar here in this case, into the souffle mold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn it around and then I'm going to pour it into the other souffle mold. So what this is doing is lining all the edge, the side of the souffle. So like that, you can see that there. It's all lined nicely with the raw sugar and the butter. And then I'm just going to tip this one out. So that's our souffle molds that are all done. So once that mixture is nice and smooth, what we're going to do, go and do is add a little bit of sugar. We're going to mix sugar and corn flour together. So I've got um, 40 grams of corn flour and 25 grams of sugar. I'm going to mix that together. If you don't mix it together, it might become lumpy when you start when you add it to your um, your souffle mix or your puree. So we'll add that in and we'll just blend that back up with the mixer. So it's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna heat that back up. until it thickens. It should thicken up. So the corn flour and the sugar in there, that's helped thickening the mixture. Once that's thickened up, it'll take a couple of minutes. Then we take it off. We should cool it down slightly. Um, but just for the sake of today, um, I'm gonna move ahead and I'm gonna add uh, 50 grams of butter. And then I'm going to mix that butter through. So this is the base of your souffle. You can do the same with any other, with any other um, fruit if you like, and you'll get the same result. So it's nice and smooth there. And then you just normally put it in a bowl and you glad wrap it. And I've done this one before previously.
So that's your final base. So when you're when you're cooking, um, normally somebody's asking how high is the flame. Normally a, a hot when you're starting, it should be a low heat when you're cooking the the, the, the strawberries and the rhubarb. Um, and then when you're adding everything else, you want it quite high, um, but you want to be careful that you don't burn burn the um, burn your puree. Okay. So the next part is we have um, some egg whites. So we have 220 grams of egg whites. I'm going to throw them into the mixer. And then we have egg white powder. Now this will help stabilize your egg whites and it will help hold everything nice together. Um, and keep them quite strong. But if you don't have egg white powder, that's fine. You can just use the caster sugar instead. You don't need to add any more. So we'll give that a good mix. And then we'll throw that in with our egg whites. Some people use cream of tartare to also, or baking powder to keep it nice and so sometimes you use baking powder or cream of tartare to hold all this the um the egg whites together as well so we have that whipping nicely there Okay. Um, once you start to see it go look white, then what we want to do is start slowly adding the rest of the sugar, very slowly. So it's starting to fluff up nicely and you're just very slowly sprinkling this in. And you don't want to overmix this because what will happen is it will break up and it will start separating. But you do want to get it to like um, a stiff peak. So if I look at this now, that's like a three quarter peak. See how it's just folding over? It's been a little bit longer than that. Starting to look nice and glossy. This part is... People are asking where can you get uh, egg white powder? Normally a lot of uh, cake food shops or specialty food shops, you can get uh, egg white powder. So that's the stiff peaks. And if you really want to test, then you just go like this. And hopefully it won't drop on my head. If it doesn't drop on my head, then it's okay. If it drops on my head, then it needs a little bit longer. <laughs> so what we do, we get a little bit of the egg whites and we mix it in with the souffle base. And this you can be quite firm with. Just a, if you're using baking, baking powder or, or um, a cream of tartare, then you just use a pinch is enough. So 
So what I'm doing here is I'm just folding this through um, quite quite roughly at the start because if I mix it all together, then it's not going to combine very well. It's not going to become nice and smooth. So add another little bit. This one's a little bit gentler. So a folding motion is under or in the middle, under and around. And normally you do a quarter turn, in the middle, under and around. You keep doing that motion, then it will come together nicely. Then I'm going to mix it all back into here into the other egg whites. And this is where you need to be a little bit more gentle. You want to mix it until it's just mixed. You don't want to over mix it, otherwise you'll deflate all that lovely air that you've just incorporated into the egg whites. So you really want to get to the bottom, keep turning it. Now you can do this mixture uh, up until six hours before, put it in the fridge, have it all ready in your souffle molds, um, or I prefer doing it uh, fresh. You get a better result when it's fresh, but you can, if you're having a big party, you could do this during the day before you come to the party, um, before your friends come over, um, and you could just leave it in the fridge and just put it in the oven. So the easiest way to put this into your souffle molds is by a piping bag. So I use my finger and thumb as a scraping tool to push the souffle mix into the bag. You fold it up like that. And then we'll just cut that off. Might use a knife actually. And I have for the recipe, you can do six. Depends on the size of your souffle molds. Um, today, I'm just going to do four. And I'm just piping that in. You want to get it just above the rim. And depending on the size of your souffle, depends on how long it cooks for. So if your molds are bigger, then it will take take less time. Sorry, if your molds are bigger, it'll take more time than if they're small. So we just make that nice and flat. And what I do is with my finger and the thumb, I just run around the edge. This will help it stop from sticking. If it sticks to the side, then you can have a bit of a wonky uh, souffle and it won't rise evenly.
So this size should be about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, any bigger, a little bit more. If it's smaller, a little bit less. There we are, that's our first recipe done and dusted. Now we're gonna move on to the second recipe. So we have a, uh, a bay marie. So this is a passion fruit souffle we're working on now. This is a bay marie, so it's a double boiler. So just a, a pan with water in the bottom. Then you have a mixing bowl. And then we'll add three egg yolks. So this method is called the Sabillon method. Icing sugar. So if you've heard of a Sabillon, it's really egg yolks uh, whisked up um, with a flavoring. In this case, we're doing passion fruit and this will form our souffle base. So what we want to do is whisk this up and get as much air into it as possible. And what you want to get to is whisk this up as much as you can, get a lot of air and volume into it and cook it at the same time. This makes it really, really strong. And when you're cooking it, you basically want to cook it to ribbon stage. What that means is that you want to be able to do um, figure eights and they should hold. They should hold there when you dribble it down. So at the moment it's very, very runny. After a while, after a lot of whisking, you'll become quite thick. You do, um, somebody's just asking, do you remove the seeds from the juice? Yes, you do. But I also like to put a little bit of seed at the end sometimes um, when you're folding in your egg whites. But yes, removing the seeds is wise. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and I'm going to put it into this mixer. Just so it goes faster. So again, with souffles, lots and lots of air. What we're trying to do is build air, incorporate air into the eggs and the egg yolks and the egg whites. The more air that you have, the more your souffles are gonna rise. So somebody's asking is the oven is fan forced? Now the ovens are fan forced. Um, you don't want too much fan. If you've got an oven that's really, really powerful with a lot of fan, that can blow your souffle around. So uh, 180 degrees fan force, but if it's really strong, uh, your fans in your oven, then I would do 200 degrees, not fan forced. So somebody's asking whether, whether it's better to place them on a tray or a dish. Um, a tray is fine. I've used a tray today, a metal tray. Um, that's fine as well. Um, a flat tray is, is perfect. So I'm going to put it back over the, the heat. You can see how it's getting quite thick now. 
So I want to get more heat into this so it makes it nice and strong. And I can start to start to see that figure eight coming in. You can even write your name, Jason. And what you want to see is that sort of hold for a few seconds. I'm going to go back to the mixer. At the same time, I'm using these different molds, the black ones, a little bit shorter, and the same thing. I'm just brushing up with the butter to line the souffle molds. Like so. You can even do shot glasses if you want a really small souffle. I've done that a lot of times, and those souffles will only take like two to three minutes to cook. So I'm using raw sugar again. In this recipe, I did say uh, caster sugar, but with any recipe, it doesn't really matter. I mean. You can throw, try different things, caster sugar, brown sugar, raw sugar, um, see what works best for you. I'm just checking my souffles here. They're starting to come up quite nicely. That's good. So now when I grab the whisk now, you can really start to see it holding shape. And when you write your name, it sort of holds. When you do figure eights, they're holding for a few seconds there. So that's what you want. Brilliant. Next stage. So by using the egg yolks and the icing sugar, this is gluten-free, so anyone that's gluten-free, these are perfect for you. So egg whites, we have 120 grams of egg whites here. This one I'm not going to put any cream of tartare or any egg white, any uh, egg white powder. I'm just going to do them straight with just caster sugar. Caster sugar is important because if you use um, normal sugar, it's a little bit too coarse and it might become grainy when you're mixing your egg whites. The caster sugar is a little bit finer and what that does is it dissolves when you're whisking it a lot easier. So. Once it starts to turn white, then I'm slowly adding my egg white, um, my sugar, very gently. And you can actually hear the, the souffle or the egg whites when they're whisking, you can hear them that they are starting to get thicker. The machine starts to go slower. So I know it's pretty close. If 
fresh passion fruit is the best uh, to use in the recipe for this recipe. Um, it's got better flavor, but you can also get the frozen stuff if you don't have fresh. So that's still a bit three quarters, needs a little bit longer. And again, if I put this in my head, it shouldn't come out. It's a good trick. So again, you see how glossy and thick that is? That's beautiful. So a third of this mix into your passion fruit sabayon. And it's nice and beautiful and smooth. And then we're folding it back into the rest of the egg whites. This souffle, this second souffle, the passion fruit is quite a bit more delicate than the other one. So the other one will hold quite well. This one will rise quite a bit and it will be a lot more delicate, a lot more refined, a lot lighter. So again, the folding motion under, around, over, until you can't see any more egg whites. You want to scrape the sides and get right to the bottom. Look at that, how smooth and beautiful is that looking? That is amazing. So we're gonna spoon this one in rather than using a piping bag. So if you don't have a piping bag at home, we'll just spoon this one in. Now you can uh, reduce your passion fruit juice if you want a stronger flavored souffle, because don't forget you've got a lot of egg whites in there and that takes away a lot of the flavor of the, the passion fruit. Um, so if you want it really, really powerful in flavor, then reduce it by maybe half. So you still have 120 mils, but you might've started with a 200 mils and reduce it down to 120. So I'm just spooning this one in. Someone's asked why am I spooning this rather than piping. I'm just showing you a different method. Um, so this one works quite well as well. I like to have it a little bit higher. And again, just running my finger around the edge. And this one, I'm not gonna flatten out. I'm just gonna keep it rustic. So it's just showing you a different, different method. And my other souffles are just about there. So timing is perfect. These ones should take about 10 minutes. So they, they rise quite quickly. So I'll pop them in and I'll take the other ones out. So you can see there, beautifully risen, nice, beautiful souffles. Fantastic. Just gonna move this out of the way. So 
So I'm sorry, the recipe was, somebody's asking about the egg whites, is 120 grams of egg whites and 60 grams of um, caster sugar. That's to mix with your egg whites uh, at the start. Um, unfortunately, it sort of missed out on the recipe. So yes, 120 grams of egg whites. So, We just dust it with a little bit of icing sugar. And there we have our perfect souffle. Careful, very hot. So there we have it. Nicely risen. Um, what we can do is what uh, I used to do in the restaurant is used to go out. Um, you can do this with ice cream and you actually take the top off to make a little hole. Take the top off there. And what you can do is pour cream down inside or you can actually use ice cream. You can do ice cream as well. And you can also garnish it with some strawberries. A couple of strawberries on the side. And there's our fantastic souffle. So our rhubarb and strawberry souffle. So I'm gonna give that a taste if you don't mind. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Nice, light, airy. And you can see with these souffles, they, they hold up quite well and they keep their, their height quite well for, for quite some time. So if you're with a lot of guests, they could sit out for maybe three to five minutes before they start collapsing back down. Wow, that's amazing. And the other souffles will take um, about five, five minutes. Um, but if there's any questions, you want to talk through any questions, please feel free to, to shoot them through and we can, um, we can discuss them if you like. So somebody's asking, what are the tips to adding alcohol to a souffle? So there are two tips that I can give you. Um, you can either, when you're making the egg yolk method or the sabio method, instead of using 120, um, mils of juice, then you can add 90 mils of juice and 30 mils of liqueur. And it could be any juice. If you want to do strawberry juice, if you wanted to do raspberry juice um, with a raspberry liqueur, then 90 mils of your, um, your juice and 30 mils of your puree. If you're using the other method, then you can just add um, a little bit of alcohol, whether or whatever liqueur you want to add, maybe 30 mils just to add, it, um, add a bit of more flavor into it um, at the end when you make mixing it up. So that's, that's what I would do. When I was in, when I was in Adelaide, um, we used to make a souffle base, which was a little bit different, which was with flour uh, and it's like a custard base. And it was quite strong and thick as well. And we used to use 40 mils of the base, souffle base, and we used to add 20 grams of the whatever alcohol you want to. Bailey's was amazing. So if you're doing a banana and Bailey's souffle, Bailey's in there would be perfect. So you'd heat up your base, add your liqueur, um, and then fold your egg whites in. So that would be for one souffle. So for uh, somebody's asking if you have leftovers of your souffle, can they be refrigerated? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't doesn't um, hold too well if you have leftovers. They need to be eaten on that day. If you, you can refrigerate them, eat them, but they're not very nice. So I would suggest that you eat them fresh, um, straight out of the oven before um, they collapse. So somebody's asking, can you make the souffles uh, in the afternoon before the dinner party? Um, let's say you can, for the first souffle, the rhubarb and the, the strawberry souffle, you can make that up to six to eight hours beforehand and just keep them in the fridge. So you, you can make the whole mix up, put them in your molds um, and keep them in there before you go and bake them and 
15 minutes before your dessert is about to be served, pop them in the oven um, and they'll rise perfectly. With the Sabion method, that I wouldn't recommend doing beforehand, but you could do the Sabion part beforehand and keep that nice and cool. Um, and then whisk your egg whites just before you need to serve your dessert. So that's the two different ways of, of doing your souffles. So somebody's asking, do you need to bring uh, the souffles uh, to room temperature before you start cooking? Um, now, you don't need to. You can bring them straight in the fridge and put them straight into the oven. Um, they may take a little bit longer to cook, though. So if, if it's normally taking 10 minutes from fresh, you would probably want to add another three to five minutes on top of that, so maybe 15 minutes. So it does take a little bit longer. So I'm just checking these souffles now and they're coming up quite nicely. Probably another couple of minutes. Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh, very good question. So what is the recommendation of making one, two souffles as opposed to half a dozen in this recipe? Um, so I would recommend that you make the base uh, and you can do two times the recipe for the base um, or two, it's, it's a recipe for six. So if you divide it by three, then you'll get enough for two people. Um, when you're whisking your egg whites, um, you might want to do it by hand though, because um, a small amount in this, these KitchenAid mixes um, can be quite difficult to, to whisk up. So you might have to whisk it by hand. So if you're making a recipe for two, then maybe you want to um, just whisk your egg whites by hand. So somebody's asking, um, can you substitute um, a different fruit for the rhubarb and strawberry? Yes, you can. You can definitely, you could even do um, passion fruit like I did there. Um, you wouldn't cook it out as much as I did with the, with the um, strawberry and the rhubarb, but you can definitely do it the same way. And, and pretty much uh, most fruits, um, you could do it that way, but you do want to have a nice, strong flavored fruit. Um, if it's something too delicate, uh, pear and apple um, doesn't have enough strength and robustness to really take over that egg white uh, flavour. So you might get a, an eggy flavoured souffle. So really those robust, robust fruits, any berries are amazing, blackberries, blueberries, they make a fantastic souffle. The stronger the flavour, the better tasting souffle you'll have. Uh, so somebody's asking, do any other juices work quite well um, instead of the passion fruit? I would say definitely mango. Mango is unbelievable. It's amazing. Um, so like I said before, if you did uh, banana and Baileys, it would work quite well. You would blend your um, Baileys um, with your banana, blend that up, make it to a puree and use it the same way. Um, they're probably my favourite juices that, that I would use with this recipe. Somebody's asking about savoury souffles. Um, so it's a little bit of a different method when you're making a savoury souffle. Um, a great one would be a, a cheese souffle. So again, that robust flavour of the cheese. If it's um, like a Roquefort is really good in a cheese souffle. You would make a roux base, so flour and butter. You would whisk that up. You would add milk and that makes your base. So probably if you did three eggs, um, three egg yolks into that mixture as well. Um, so butter, flour, cook that out, add three egg yolks, whisk that in together, um, and then add your uh, cheese through that mixture. So I'd whisk that cheese through the mixture, and then you whisk up your egg whites with um, salt, not sugar. You could add a little bit of sugar, but mainly salt. Give it a bit of a whisk. Again, the cream of tartar works really well in that, um, in that method. And then you just fold it through. Um, you can also do a goat's cheese. Goat's cheese is amazing as a souffle. You can mix goat's cheese through your uh, souffle base, mix that through, add your egg whites um, and fold that through um, and that works quite well. 
You can also do what we call as a collar. So if you get um, some silicon paper and you can put it around the edge of the souffle and you can make it about this high, you can put your souffle mix into that um, and put a little bit of parmesan inside, fill it up with more souffle mix um, and cook it with a collar, which then you'll get a much higher souffle. Now the savory souffles, they don't hold as well as the, um, the, the sweet souffles because there isn't that same strength that you get from the sugar that really helps bind it all together. So our souffles are done. So these are our passion fruit souffles. Bit of icing sugar on top. Just dust that nicely. And then we have our passion fruit souffle. So we got there. So thank you very much, everyone. We really appreciate your time today. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this class. Um, but for now, thank you very much. Have a great night. Stay safe and all the best. Thank you very much. Goodbye.